Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin. I wanted to show today how to tie a um, kind of a mix of an old and a new fly. This is a orange heron intruder. So what I'm starting off with here in the vise right now is a partridge Waddington shank. It's a 45 millimeter. Um, this is going to be a great platform for tying this fly. It's going to go unweighted. So the weight of the actual shank is going to hold everything together there. So um, tying this for my stinger hook, I'm using 14 pound fire line. So Here's a 14 pound fire line. And I got some questions on this last time, but of why I don't use 30, I just use 14. So what I do is I take an actual long single strand and I double it back over. So where I'm actually having two strands um, of fire line. And what I'm doing is then is I'm kind of making that even doubled. So it's an actual double loop. Um, so you can see here that there's actually two, two strands that are in there. And I'm gonna feed that through um, an eye up kind of an octopus style um, it's an intruder hook from partridge size four and so i don't have a reason why i use the 14 over the 30. Um, i find it holds it in place better because there's actually just kind of like using a double loop um, just really a personal preference so one thing that is not a personal preference i think this is really key to rigging these stinger hooks is whenever you ring them rig them i talked about this before in other videos is that rigging them so you feed your loops through the part of the eye here and you go through so whenever it's all lined up it's pulling on a, uh, a level base there so i um, using 140 black and I'm gonna lay a nice thread base across the bottom here and I'm gonna take all the way back to where I'm gonna pinch that return on this double shank and for tying this in uh, I'm not putting the hook very deep on this the uh, the hook is in a stinger you'll see some of these that are way back here this one is going to be really close actually to the back of the Waddington shank it's not going to sit too deep um, this fly could be tied on a platform of a single iron um, but I want to use this smaller hook so I'm going to run all four of those strands that were part of that fire line there I'm going to run those back out to the front and I'm just going to make sure that my thread base is laid all the way to the front so it doesn't slide in between the, uh, the pieces there but I'm going to run this all the way back out to the front of the shank. And then what I'm actually going to do is then run this through the front hole here, the, the eye of the shank. So it's going through and I'm going to run that back. So now I've actually doubled it over once. And as I come through the last, I'm going to go right to where it kind of that return loop is. And I'm actually going to run it back up part way. And I'm going to put it up to maybe three quarters of the way. Up. I'm going to cut it, you can see it's kind of hanging down right about there, and I'm just going to get all that nice and secure and rub it in. Um, wrap up and down a few times just to give some thread on there. And once that's done as well, um, use a little bit of Sally Hansen's just to, just to firm everything up. Um, probably don't need it with doing it three ways, but I like to just put a coating on there just to be safe. So now I'm back where we tied in, and I'm gonna use for the body of this fly, it's gonna be a, um, a orange yarn, but I'm also gonna be using kind of a rib of some real, th the, uh, the thicker mylar tinsel with the gold side. So for prepping this in, I'm gonna tie the silver side up. What that's gonna do, since the silver side's up, as I go to make my first wrap, it'll be the gold side facing out. So, got the silver on there. Um, what I am going to do for this though is uh, once I've got all the way back to the beginning, I'm going to run, here's where the, the return eye ends. I'm just going to run kind of a, a tag um, or tip back up of just gold real quick, just to cover that a little bit, just to give it a little bit of flash in the butt end there. And I'm going to tie this off at the, on the bottom. So I'm gonna use that for a rib coming back against the, the yarn here. So got my carded yarn. This is some it's unmarked carded um, orange, kind of has a little bit of sparkle to it. Just kind of enough to get it in there, nothing special. And I'm gonna start to wrap forward on this yarn. I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of room there behind the eye just to, I'm gonna be adding some other things here. So I'm just gonna secure that off on the bottom four or five good wraps and trim that out. And then the rib for this going through is gonna be this gold. And so then I pretty much have my, my platform there. Um, 
So off of this now, I'm gonna put my first, um, first little bit of something is going to be some um, Lady Amherst uh, tail. This is stuff that I've dyed actually orange um, and I'm looking for some fibers that are gonna come kind of almost to the hook point. So as I kind of start to line these up and these little ones here on the side for this first set, I'm gonna use those longer ones later, but cut off about six or seven of these fibers and I'm gonna set them across the top here. And so they're actually gonna be kind of like an underwing. I'm kind of fan them out a little bit. They're just meant to, as I put on my, uh, my wing that I'm gonna use here, which is Temple Dog, it's just gonna help give a little bit of lift off that so it doesn't get compressed into the body. So this Temple Dog, it's a lot softer than Arctic Fox. Um, it has a lot more of these black kind of guard hairs in it as well. So I'm gonna look for, um, I've got two patches here. I'm gonna look for, this one has a little bit longer hair on it and I'm gonna do this in, in two steps. So I'm gonna try to find one that's got good amount of length to it. This could be a good one. And so prepping this kind of material that has like all these under, under hair, it's got guard hairs and all this other stuff, I'm gonna kind of pinch out what I want the longest hair to be. So I know that not everything's gonna go the full length, but I want everything to kind of at least the main bulk to be there. So I've kind of pinched off there. What you do is you're gonna start pulling back with your fingernail flat against your, I'm kind of pinching with my fingernail against my, my thumb. You start to see that all the shorter stuff just starts to work its way out. So you can do this with a toothbrush, you can do it with your finger, but I find with a finger, even a little bit, you wet it a little bit, it'll help pull out that, that under fur that doesn't have the length that you want it. Uh, I am leaving, the guard hairs, the black in there too, um, just for this piece here. And I want to measure out, I don't want this interfering with the hook, but I want it to give it some nice length. So I'm going to go right to about there. And so I'm going to make a little, you see how I did is I held it up there, kind of spaced it out to the length. You pinch with the side and then I can kind of draw right to where the eye is and know where I want to make my cut. So I'm going to cut right about there. And then I can tie that in with one loose gathering wrap. This stuff really compresses down. So one loose gathering wrap and then the rest goes in there pretty good. So um, this stuff, it has a little bit of loft right now, but it really, really pushes down in the, in the water. Um, to be safe on it as well, I'm gonna take another little hit of Sally Hansen's just right on the top of that. There's a little bit much, but at least a little bit just to kind of keep that in there so it's not gonna go anywhere. So now I've got that nice underwing going. I'm gonna come back at it again with some of these longer pieces of this uh, Lady Amherst tail, um, these, these fibers. So I'm really looking for these longer ones that are gonna really reach into the back of the hook, the back of the fly. Um, I'm gonna take probably about three per side. So you don't really need a lot. This stuff is super sparse. And if you're not really inclined to use the this stuff can be pretty expensive, this Amherst tail. There's a, a lot of nice variegated um, ostrich now. So you could use some kind of ostrich or put that in there. Um, but with this Amherst tail, I'm gonna put about three fibers. And the way that I secure these in is I've got a bunch here, a little clump, and I can kind of roll them around my fingers to loosen them up. As you go to line them up, you just catch three. Actually, I caught one that time. You can just kind of pull them back because they're all a little bit staggered. As you pull them back, you can start to see how many you got. So there's three on that side. I'm gonna do three on the near side. And then I'm just gonna secure those in. You can start to see this is gonna get that really nice kind of shrimpy pattern. Um, it's got a lot of movement on it. So got that in there, got my wing. Uh, I'm gonna do one more shorter wing that leaves with, trying to find some with a little bit more of these dar darker guard hairs. So there's a little bit of a mix of orange and black. I'm actually gonna shorten this wing out a little bit as well. So well, the other one, I wanted that to go all the way back to the hook. This one I want to be sitting here a little bit shorter. Um, I almost want the, the bulk, you can kind of see the bulk of the orange kind of came right there. That's where I want all of my tips of my guard hairs to go this time. So I'm kind of staggering this one a little bit. So as I go and place these in here, there's already some um, Sally Hansen's in there. So it's gonna leak kind of bleed through a little bit that's still going to be secure. And I just go ahead and wrap towards the head to build up that dam and I'm good. So you can see I've got a lot of kind of 
work in there. The next step on this is to use some heron. So a heron or a heron substitute, this is a really, really dark purple. Um, I'm not even sure if it's even called purple. It has a kind of a, a black, gray, purple color to it. And I'm gonna tie this in by the tips with, as it, so as it faces me, the con cave side is facing away. I'm gonna tie this in here, push back that tip. And as I go to wrap, I'm just gonna keep on pushing everything back as I go around. Wet my fingers. Just making sure that everything lays nice back and good there. So it's starting to help keep that stuff all locked in there. And I have another piece of as well, um, kind of looking here that looks like it's pretty full that I really don't need any more. But if, I, if that was coming up a little bit short or if it wasn't as full, you could also kind of do a little bit more just on the bottom of the throat. Um, you could do like the normal throating part where you kind of clip out the center, tie it in, slide it back, or you could actually cut it individual fibers. But I'm pretty happy with the way that looks right now. So I'm gonna skip on that. The, uh, the next step here is to put in kind of a, a tented wing. So I go back and forth of what I like here. Um, sometimes I use pheasant. This one I'm gonna use actually off of a jungle cock cape. Um, most people know jungle cock cape here for the nails um, on salmon and steelhead flies. But you start to look at these feathers that are up here on the top. These are really nice for tenting. Um, they're not, they're a little bit transparent so you'll start to see the movements from them. And you kind of see stuff through them but um, I like to use them for tenting. And I'm gonna pick off two similar feathers here. Kinda of got a clump, so we're gonna use these two right here. So as you pull these off, see they kind of have these points. They've got a really nice center line color on them. Uh, to prep these, I'm gonna take away all the fluff that's down below. As you go and place these now, what you're gonna do is you can tie them on the trick for doing jungle cock where you kind of lay them together, both shiny sides out, make them match. And you can do the full, you lick your fingers, I'll show you, you lick your fingers, put them together, and whenever you separate them, they're separate, and you can kind of put them on that way. Um, given I've got enough head to work with and there's, these aren't um, super detailed placements, I'm actually just gonna tie them in one at a time. So I'm gonna tie in the near side here first, I'm gonna get my thread right to the middle of my head. I'm gonna tie in the close one here first. Do three wraps to get that into place. And I'm gonna tie in the far side one next. And so then as you start to put those in, you can see that you can actually then take these stems. If you start to work those up, they'll pull a little bit on them. They'll help really tent in nicely and give you a nice little spot to put them. You can also start to adjust if this one starts to droop a little bit low. You can take them, kind of move them up so they're tented a little bit more. And then once you start to do your final lock in here, you can really wrap them hard. So um, These are somewhat of a flimsy feather, so what I will do too is I'll take, before I cut off these tips, I should reverse them. And you can start to secure those down there as well. You start to build your head back up against those. Give a nice little cut and those will really help keep them from pulling out wearing loose so then I've got a nice tented wing on there I've got my separation I got my pieces there if you wanted to you could throw in a couple more feelers with the Amherst I'm gonna keep it the way it is um, do a nice whip finish on the front and if you give a little cut and then after it's done there, take it out. You can head cement it, you can do varnish, however you want to finish it up. But what this will allow, this um, tented wing will kind of help def deflect and defer um, off as the, uh, the water's coming through. And it really gives it a nice look. Fish gets a nice look at the underbody. There's a nice long feeler from the back. It's got a nice buggy view. So um, 
kind of a version of an orange heron um, kind of an intruder. So if you like this video, please go down and click the like button down below. Uh, I've got a few other fly tying videos here, um, some gear videos, some other pieces. I'd love to if you check some stuff out. Let me know what you think in the, uh, down in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel or check out another video. Thanks.